Hi, welcome to Smoking Nerf News from my humble abode in Singapore. And I'm not smoking today because I'm actually getting ready to go out. So, um, but we're still dealing with smoking. It's not the lack of cigars, as you can see. <laughs> that the reason I'm not smoking is because I'm going out with a lady friend. Woo! Lady friend! Woo! I am wanting to show you this new system that I have and a few things in Nerf that are going on. Um, okay, first off, the new system. Glass jar, you buy it giant, it's like seven, eight bucks, right? You got this lid, it's got two little holes here and here, and you tape them, okay? And then you get a little piece of cedar right here from like, um, I don't know, one of your cigars that are in, um, that are in tubes. You put it in a cup of purified water for about, um, like bottled water for overnight. You pull it out, it's gonna be all gunky looking on the inside. You rinse it out a little, and then you throw you throw this between here and here. It's a great humidor because um, it, it, it levels out your humidity. And how does it level out your humidity? The Bovita humidifier pack. These are really cool. They don't just make these for cigars. They make these for anything that you want a controlled humidity environment. Yeah. So they're, they're really cheap. It's like, I think those are like a dollar a piece or something and they'll last like three months. It's really cool, really cool. They make these big ones, like 60 gram that you fit in your whole humidor. It's probably the best way to humidify because you don't have to deal with a jar of water anymore uh, with a sponge. And if you spill it, it destroys your cigars, causes mold, all sorts of stuff. There's no longer any exposed water in the system. It all absorbs into the bag if there's too much humidity and um, it disperses humidity when there isn't any. It regulates humidity at a certain level, whatever level you want. So I was looking for those in Singapore for months and finally found them. It's pretty cool. What I used to do is just take a cigar box, put it in a bag, right? Um, open it up, take the little cedar divider here. Mmm, it smells good. You ever, you ever, smelled like real cedar, it's beautiful. Um, and, and then I would moisten this, put this in here, put my cigars in bags, close it all up and let it rehumidify. That's the way I used to do it. Well, this is far better. So now let's get to Nerf. First off, the Starshot. Running in short supply. If you want a new inbox Starshot, you better buy now. And it's not cheap, $35 United States for a toy that used to sell for 20, okay? Not cheap, and a lot of people don't see the point. It's just a fire strike pistol, but <laughs> that is not just a fire strike pistol. <laughs> I have to ask any of my victims, that is not just a fire strike pistol. Well, that's a bird of prey, of course, and bird of prey, twin sprung, you can do like 270 to 290 feet per second. You can almost do 300 feet per second, but not quite, not quite. Um, but that's enough to get you into home run hitting range and fairly accurately because you're limiting your amount of air to the barrel. And you no longer have this big dispersal of air that a lot of bigger blasters have or air guns have or things have. So a bird of prey is very accurate in the right hands, but it's also kind of fragile. And you have the, um, the the plunger tube here that is stretched over here. It's not the most prettiest looking blaster in the world, okay? Um, but it's my favorite by far. Um, I have a BDSM, Brass Bill Strike Magnum, actually more powerful than the bird, but it's twice the size. It's huge, you know? So if you really are up to building one of these, get one while you have a chance. Now, my friend Paige Roundtree actually building a bird of prey. He's got one up to 12 kilograms. He's doing 190 feet per second at 12 kilograms. Not bad, not bad. I just can't wait till he figures out how to strengthen the blaster, get some courage, and really up the yield on it. Did I ever tell you that I put 40 yield, 40 kilograms in here before? I did, actually, yes. It didn't have, it did 250 feet per second. And in actuality, 28 kilograms with long shot size springs will do to 90 feet per second. So 
in actuality, it's diminishing returns. Yeah, these blasters favor pre-compression a lot. A lot more than, I say, a long shot or a retaliator. Um, really, really do. Really. Because you got the large area and the short draw. And that tends to like uh, pre-compression a lot. So, anyway, get those. They're $35 US right now. Wow. And to think, I used to own a case of them. Now I have, like, two left. Okay. I used to own a whole case of these, man. I own like, I own like, well, actually I own one case which had five, and then I owned another one which was six. So, um, I used a couple for commissions, I used a couple for reshells. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit, quite a bit. So, um, next up, um, the regulator. I, you can tell by the kind of blasters I shoot that I usually don't like very much, um, flywheel blasters i'm even leery on repeaters retaliators even a long shot i mean you'll see me break out a long shot every once in a while sure they're useful they're great blasters but they're not my cup of tea per se well definitely not a flywheel blaster but hasbro in singapore is about to unveil the regulator and i'm happy about that one i know it has a pcbs you need circuit board to control the firing. Okay, there's no way around that. And you need, um, you also need um, a way to up the voltage. Okay, um, and it's a little proprietary, sure. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be about the size of a strife or a minimized rapid strike, but it's not. But um, it's coming out, and I'm going to get one. Yeah. I'm gonna throw three lipos on it. I don't need uh, that much power, really. I might throw a, uh, I might throw like 180s on the motors. I might do what my friend on Death by Nerf Blaster said, and he said he's the most fit system, which is actually pretty. If again, there's this really long post about me asking how has anyone pushed a regular yet? Okay, this really long post from this really really brilliant guy. Check it out. Check it out. It's a good post. It's a really great post. Okay. And um, he said um, that he would like to go with the double MOSFET system, which would, of course, make it so you would have different voltages for your, 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 your belt, your, your flywheel motors, and circuitry for your firing system. That's freaking great, man. That's freaking great. So, um, at any rate, Coop did a, a hilarious review on this um, because a lot of the blaster has a lot to laugh at. Um, let me explain. Okay, so I, I want this blaster, and yeah, it has stuff to laugh at. What's going on, Chris? Well, well, simple. Okay, really, really simple. The fact of the matter is that the uh, blaster has some really weird accessories, one of which, and I've been wondering this since day one, okay? I've been wondering this since day one, has been that it has a... Um, Thing that protrudes up. What the fuck is that? Right in front of your barrel. Well, it turns out that has a little handle on it and you can swivel it in different ways. I'm like, no. It's supposed to be like the modules. The modules always has that rear handle that I don't like. On the ion fire, my hand always hits it, which is why I don't use an ion fire. As a matter of fact, a couple weeks ago, I modded an ion fire for a friend. And I, first time I touched an ion fire. <laughs> I kid you not. I, I love the sharp fire so much that I, I just was like, I don't need to mess with an iron fire. What are you talking about? I'm getting like, I, I can get up to 185, 200 feet per second with a sharp fire. If I just, you know, use one single spring, I can do 170 feet per second. That's perfect for sidearm. I have nothing else better than I want for sidearm. Now I got a freaking magazine going out of it with an epoxy fiberglass um, mag frame, and that's called a Mauser Fire, and that's getting made into an even more bitchin' blaster called the Archer. Uh, when when it's time to bring that out, it will be brought out, but it's pretty much, I would say, about 90% catted and ready to go. Um, and I say 90% because there's some things I decided to make it a little smaller, a few other things I can't really discuss, but improvements, especially also on the lockup system for the um, toolless disassembly. Yeah, toolless like a firearm disassembly. <laughs> like I said, man, like I said, you know, um, that's why I call it sidearm, okay? But um, the regulator 
uh, has, I hear it has a good stock, um, the barrel attachments are screwy, all that stuff. And the blaster is big, and it takes C batteries, but I like it, man. I like it. I'm actually going to get one. Um, I have a friend in the office um, who plays a lot of full-length wars. We argue all the time about full-length versus Stefan. And the fact that, well, full-length is more in demand. Sure, it's more in demand, but a lot of people would like to shoot Stefan. You know, but there's a lot of also laws in the country that don't allow Stefans. So because I'm in a place where Malaysia above me, most of them use uh, full length, and the wars I like are Stefan. I have been having to diversify just a little bit. Um, I, I got a, a, a the the, um, the Artemis, for example. Oh man, Artemis is great. Only thing I wish about the Artemis is it had a little more power, like the Apollo. That's it, though. That thing is really, really something. 30 rounds, you can just load them in. Probably one of the most brilliant blasters that Hasbro's ever made is an Artemis. The Chaos, eh. The, the Nemesis, okay, it's a Tommy gun, the, eh. But really, but right up there is the new Regulator. And I always said, when they come up with Selective Fire, I'm buying one. And sure enough, I am. So, I really want you to look at Coop's vid because it's funny. It's really funny. It's a very funny vid. And Endgame is about to happen this month. This month, Endgame, okay, um, is, is happening in Georgia. So if you want to go, ask the right people. Drac is organizing it. It's going to be really cool. And I was looking back at my compadres. Well, not my compadres. <laughs> There's reasons. If you look on my video, you can say I blacklisted their league, actually, because the last game was really screwed up. Um... But Humans vs. Zombies in Camarillo, uh, they're having a game uh, in July 1st, um, but the funny thing is they don't know where it is, okay? And I remember how big of a pain in the butt uh, Cam Camarillo Park and Recreation was, and they had to consort to all these rules and everything, and really hard. Now, uh, you know, I, 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 Evan worked his butt off, okay? But the players didn't like me, obviously, I'm this older guy playing Nerf, and, um, you know, oh, gosh, he must be some child predator or something. Oh, you should hear the rumors. They were terrible. They were terrible. And, you know, and then one time when I was up on the hill, and uh, one, of the, one of their MVPs, we'll just call her Miss MVP, uh, Miss MVP wouldn't let me down from the hill, and... Basically, gave me 10 seconds to leave, but it was a place 10 seconds where you couldn't get out of, and the zombies got me because I couldn't run from them. Uh, basically, shit like that. We we're talking hills you can normally run down. We we're talking that sort of thing. And my friend Aaron, Aaron Kemp, who was in um, Redon the Redonda League, he actually founded the Redonda League, uh, was there. He saw the whole thing. And the whole game was just... And I remember several of us after that game... We were just like, you know what? We can do better than this. We can do better than this. And this was before the first NVZ, which I didn't go for the simple reason that, well, you know, I knew first year it was going to have problems. But this year I might be going. I might actually be going to Endgame. 